This classic whistle-stop presentation is brought to you by OutWest. Love the West? So do we. Click the icon or go to scvoutwest.com. Our next stop is Oakland, California, and a ride on one of the most sophisticated commuter light rail operations in America, the BART system. While subway travel has been a way of life in the eastern United States since the turn of the century, West Coasters and their cars have remained inseparable. Slowly but surely, however, BART is changing the set habits of many San Francisco Bay Area residents. The concept of an under the San Francisco Bay tube has been around for many years. In October of 1920, Major General George T. Goethals, the builder of the Panama Canal, made public his proposal for building such an underwater tube in order to solve the acute transportation problems facing San Francisco and East Bay communities. As shown here in an early newspaper article, the alignment of Gothel's proposed tube is almost exactly the same as Bart's Transbay tube. Some 20 years after Gothel's proposal was unveiled, a joint Army-Navy commission in 1947 issued a report recommending that an underwater tube be built in order to relieve the automobile congestion which was already occurring on the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge after the bridge had been open for only 10 years. The Joint Commission's proposal called for two bores to carry electric trains going in each direction as compared to Gothel's proposal, which envisioned a two-level tube to accommodate automobiles, trucks, and trains. It must be remembered that General Gothel's proposal was made before the bridge was a reality. Bart's Transbay tube has been acknowledged the world over as one of history's most outstanding civil engineering achievements, stretching 3.6 miles along the floor of the San Francisco Bay between Oakland and San Francisco, the tube is the vital link in the BART system. It is both the longest and at its maximum of 135 feet below the surface, the deepest vehicular tube in the world in service today. Beginning in 1959, six years before the start of construction, seismic studies were conducted and soil data obtained to aid in design and alignment decisions. Although the tube does not cross an active geologic fault, special provisions were made in the design to make the tube flexible to absorb earthquake shocks. In February of 1967, the first 57 sections used in Bart's Transbay tube were launched like a ship. The sections were towed to a nearby dock where 4,200 cubic yards of concrete were poured into the interior to form the 2.3 foot interior walls and track bed. Late in 1968, here's how work was progressing on Bart's Transbay tube when about three miles of tube were in place. In April of 1969, the last section of tube was lowered into position completing the connection between Oakland and San Francisco. To prevent corrosion of its steel skin from saltwater electrolysis, the tube employs a cathodic protection system. Track laying, electrification, and installation of train control equipment and ventilation were completed in early 1973. Ventilation structures on both sides of the bay act as the terminal points for the tube. Through them, air is drawn into the tube and expelled as the trains pass to and fro. The whistle stop crew stopped off at 800 Madison Street in Oakland, California. There we met with Cy Mober, manager of public information for BART, who gave us a brief history and tour of the BART system. BART started revenue service in September of 1972. At that time, we operated only from MacArthur Station to Fremont. Then, in 1973, service began to Concord and to Richmond. In 1974, we completed the Transbay Tube, and service began operating through the Transbay Tube. However, prior to that, service had been operating from Daly City into San Francisco. Through the magic of today's TV technology, we were able to get these existing light scenes of this exclusive visit to BART Central Control, 
the nerve center of the BART system, where a highly trained crew of specialists monitors and directs the movements of trains on all parts of the system. Pictured on the left is a display of the condition of the system's power supply, and in the center at the top is a visual display indicating the operating conditions of maintenance facilities, vents, and fan controls. At the bottom of this panel is a display indicating, by the use of red lights, the location of trains in the transbay tube. On the right, this display shows the location of trains throughout the system, with indicators which show whether the doors on a train in a station are open or closed. Seated at consoles directly in front of the display panels are the BART specialists, whose responsibility it is to maintain constant vigil over the operation of the system, being alert to any condition which may have an adverse impact on service. BART Central maintains radio communications with all trains as well as the maintenance crew on the system and provides a direct link to BART Police Services Dispatch Center, which is located directly off central control. From his position on a raised platform, BART Central Supervisor is charged with the responsibility of the safe and efficient operation of the entire BART system. Underlying all functions of BART central control is the motto, Pamper the Passenger, which hangs in the control room. This motto epitomizes the prime concern of all BART employees as they work for the safety, comfort, and convenience of all BART passengers. Don't go away, there's another part to this presentation brought to you by OutWest. Shop, look, and listen right here at WhistleStopUSATV.com.